Good morning. Is this on? Is it working? All right. <laughs> All right. Good morning. Thanks for coming to One Million Cups. Um, today we are, uh, let's see. None of this would be possible, of course, without our organizers. Here we have Esther Lopez, uh, Nancy Lowry, Leslie Lanier. Uh, I'm Eric Bischoff, filling in for Esther Gamboa. And back up there to that, we have Arturo Durazas. I was just trying to let you know that I couldn't hear you. Well, then sit up here. <laughs> Some empty spots right here, Arturo. All uh, right. Anyhow, what the one nine cups. Um, let's see. We are going to start off with a quick video to introduce the hub for those of you that haven't been here before. Um, and here we go. One Million Cups is a weekly educational program developed by the Kaufman Foundation. Over the years, we've added more cities. It creates a great energy here to see what's happening across the country. What I've learned from other entrepreneurs is very, very valuable. Sitting in a room with other people that have ideas too, it helps people to leave thinking, you know what? My idea is worth something. It's worth pursuing. It's worth going after it. Even if it looks like a challenge, I should still go out and try to do it. All this is being streamed to you live, uh, thanks to Digital Bowl and uh, Borderland TV. Or Omar, would you like to come talk about that? Thank you. Hi, my name is Omar Chavez. I'm with Borderland.tv. Um, we are the company that is responsible for live streaming this event. So um, I would like to invite all of you to go onto your Facebook pages and go to find One Million Cups El Paso. And if you can please share the live stream with your friends, with the people that follow you, so that way we can get the word out and so that way we can get this thing to grow. Um, and yeah, thank you. Who is here for the first time today? Excellent, excellent. Great, guys. Um, thanks for coming. Who, who brought a friend today? No, nobody brought, nobody's got friends? <laughs> okay, okay, excellent. <laughs> oh, okay, well, Tom, good job, Tom. If you can always count on Tom to invite people. Um, we got another quick video for you to tell you a little bit more about um, the One Million Cups program. And there you have it. So yeah, one million cups. Basically, we're all here to uh, learn from fellow entrepreneurs, fellow small business people, um, kind of see what they did to get to where they are and um, learn from them. So um, once, no, they're gonna get up here, give you a short presentation. Um, and then you get to just needle them with questions. So don't be afraid to, to ask away. Um, quick shout out to our sponsors. Coffee is provided by Krispy Kreme. Uh, the venue is provided by the Hub of Human Innovation. And of course, media is provided by the Borderland TV and Digital Bowl Media. Um, and let's see, one more. If you haven't already, please download our mobile app and check in. Kind of helps us show how effective the program is here. Um, with all of that said, I'm going to present, introduce our first presenter, um, Jazz Via Projects, uh, Kath, Catherine. Here you go. Okay. 
Hello, good morning. My name is Catherine Nunez, and I'm here to introduce you, thank you, to this new project that we want to bring to El Paso that is called Jazz Villa Projects. Jazz Villa Projects is a company that works with theatrical projects, well, artistic projects in general, including performances, videos, dance, but we have focused our work mainly on theatrical productions. Jazz Villa Projects uh, is founded by Jazz Villa. He is a Cuban director, actor, well known for his works in cinema. He has made 14 films already. He's living here in El Paso and he'd love to be here today, but he won't, ab he won't be able to because he had to fly this week. He had other compromises. But I'm here, he let me in charge because I've been involved in the project since its foundation. We founded Jazz Villa Projects on December 1st, 2013, coinciding with the AIDS Awareness Day the company has always been related with social causes. Our first play in the repertory is Skyscrapers. Skyscrapers, we began with the idea of making only 12 presentations, uh, just one season in Havana, Cuba, but it really was a successful. Um, it became a phenomenon, not only a theatrical phenomenon, but only a social phenomenon for the greatest audience we had. We ended up having 84 shows, more than 10,000 spectators, and actually that in Cuba means a lot. It doesn't happen in Cuba, never. And with theater, that's impossible. So it was a really uh, challenge for us to do, but we, we did it. We, we won several awards, as you can see here. Um, we had a national tour for Cuba, several presentations in international festivals. And maybe what is the greatest repercussion of this project is that when the relations between Cuba and the US were reestablished in 2015, that place, skyscrapers, gave way to create a cultural bridge between both countries. That, the, uh, sorry, in that way, um, Skyscrapers was the first play to be performed to the ambassador of the United States in Cuba, Mr. Jeffrey De Laurentiis, and all the embassy corps of the United States in Cuba also. We, we were there with only diplomatic corps like Japan, Greece, um, Canada, England, Spain, and other, uh, and other embassies that supported our work. So we started with this project with only six sponsors with this first play, Skyscrapers, that believed in our project. Then with our second play that was Eclipse, we had more than 40 sponsors currently in Cuba that they support our work over there. And in our side, we are committed to the visibility, permanence, and, fr and profitability of these uh, institutions that help us. In January 2017, this year, this cultural bridge between both countries solidified. We made possible thanks to the support of Mike Marrero, he's the director of the Key West Theater, thanks to Nance Frank, he's a, she's a gallerist and philanthropist, and always thanks to the support of Betty Rubens, she is passionate about theater and mainly about promoting the culture in Key West. We made possible the dream, the dream of bringing he, of, sorry, of bringing to Key West, Florida, a Cuban company that we performed there in English. Also, an American company went this year to Cuba to perform there in Spanish. So it was a really exchange, not only with theater, but only with the language, because most of the actors, they didn't know how to speak in English or Spanish, and they had to learn it for the play. Today, Jas Villa, he is living here in El Paso for about one year, and since his arrival, he has always asked, why is it possible that here in a city like El Paso, we don't have a permanent resident company of theater here? And actually, the cultural movement in El Paso is very poor, mainly in theater. And we have the beautiful Plaza Theater, and we have so many mix, because it's a, it's a border city, so we have so many influences from Mexico, other, uh, I mean, it's a border city. So that's one of our mainly objectives to create here in El Paso, a permanent resident company to develop actors, writers, and people from here, because 
Here um, we bring a lot of plays from Broadway and the, the theater is sold out, but here we don't do any productions, any strong productions, so that's one of our main objectives. Of course, it's an ambitious project, that's why we want to start with skyscrapers. We are in conversation with El Plaza Theater, with a community foundation that you will box. So we want to bring here to El Paso this play that was so successful in Cuba, and it has a history, so we have to bring in, we want to bring it here to El Paso. For that, Jas Pilar, he has met up with a team of actors. Uh, we have Venezuelan, Mexican, um, Cubans, and American actors from El Paso that we are working in this project right now. And we are this actress invited, Alina Robert. He's a guest that, uh, sorry, she's a guest that she's coming from Miami. She's very well known in the Latin community because she won the, uh, the Nuestra Belleza Latina. She was presenter of Sábado Gigante. Those are really uh, famous reality shows in the Latin community. And she loved the idea to come here to El Paso for the same reason because she, she doesn't know what is El Paso like. So people from the outside, they want to come here and see what's going on here. But it would be beautiful if we have something from here. So also, we have this actress, uh, Rosa Leander Hernandez. She's Cuban. She's a very talented and respected woman. It's like... Let's see, like Meryl Streep here, that way, but in Cuba. So she's very beautiful woman, and she beloved to be here as well. So we want to start with this project, Skyscraper, to bring it here to El Paso. For that, we are inviting, inviting you all to join this beautiful project to help us to develop the project, to promote the project, and if you want to be involved, this is our presentation, and we really hope that you join us because I think that here in El Paso, we need to build more skyscrapers. Thank you. Now we have 15 minutes for questions. Um, yes. Okay. Well, we are we are barely starting. That's why we need the support and collaboration of every people that want to help us to promote it. Um, Jas Villa, he's been living here for about one year, and since his arrival, he's been trying to reach people related with arts here to see how can he involve with the projects of the city. But it doesn't really, we don't have a really strong movement here. And in, uh, in theater, it's almost nothing there. I mean, professional company that is here, established here, that could perform here uh, often, that, that doesn't happen. So that's why we are presenting this project that we want to create this company for El Paso, develop people from here, not only actors, but directors, writers, everyone who wants to, who, and also create. We are actually working in Frontera, Beyond the Wall. That's a play that is written right for El Paso because well, the director, he heard the story about people that get married right in the bridge between El Paso and Juarez and that was very interesting for us and that only happens here so that we have a lot of typical things from here from El Paso and that's why we want to create something strong here actually well yeah sorry of developing a 
um, film incubator program mm -hmm. under the, the guidance of, or the, the basically it's Peter Scorpine from the District 1 mm -hmm. has proposed it because of, you know, with what's happened with the art swaps and stuff right here, there, um, there isn't that much um, on the city website that mm -hmm. specifically targets the support of um, particularly in my end, uh, particularly with the film arts, mm -hmm. yeah. but also not really that much that targets um, the support of the live performing mm -hmm. arts. Yeah, that's right. And um, it might be helpful for you to contact mm -hmm. him yeah. because um, the program that he is he's proposing is for about somewhere in the range of 30000 to 50000 dollars of the city budget that target um, that helps um that basically earmark for um, filmmakers from El Paso yeah. filming in El Paso mm -hmm. and it may be something of, of a way to um, network with what you're trying to do. Yeah that would be great. It doesn't mm -hmm. it, it opens it up to all different forms of in, in the case of mm -hmm. like this it may be something um, of a nice wedding between what you're trying uh -huh. to do and, and the filming stuff in terms of a, maybe a documentary. Perhaps kind of after uh, we get together, you can talk to her and then we will more okay. details. So okay. We can open up for more. more yeah, thank you. Thank you. Have any of you talked to the museum and the public Yeah. Yes. Yes, we did. We we applied for for that program already. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I am. And are, is there a troupe that's been formed, an acting group that's been formed? Are you part of forming that troupe? So that uh -huh. Can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, about well, you um, yeah, uh, I've been involved in the project since its foundation in 2013 with a director in Cuba. I'm Cuban, I'm an actress too. And uh, we went here in January 2017 to perform the play in Kiwos. That was an amazing experience. Then I went to Utah there with my family. And then Jazz, he called me. I, he's a visionary. I always follow him wherever I come, wherever he is. So he told me, come here to El Paso. We want to create this El Paso. It's a beautiful city. And we need to do something there. And I told my friends and family I'm going to El Paso and they were so much afraid for me because that's what I say, people from the outside, they really think that El Paso is a very dangerous city. They were like, oh, don't go there, the river is right there, Juarez, that's very dangerous, you're crazy, no, 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 don't go there. And I was afraid, I called Jess, hey Jess, are you sure? Yes, come here, it doesn't matter. And I came and then it's a very peaceful and a very beautiful city and I say a lot of cultures here that it's a border city that's very particular so that's why I think we have to do something beautiful with this city with this project because we need to show that to the people people have a wrong idea I think of El Paso that's my experience so yeah I've been with Jazz Villa since the beginnings we performed here we went into Dominican Republic also and it's very beautiful project we always have like these actresses that they are guests to the company we are always changing our cast so that way it could be more international and it's a very beautiful experience Thank you.
really wants to pull off his striker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So let's say mm -hmm. y'all get a good company going, absolutely kill it, mm -hmm. everyone loves to play. Mm -hmm. No, no, so that's the thing, okay, Jazz Villa, he has always been, uh, I mean, he was born in Cuba, but he has lived in all their countries, like Spain, in England, he was so many times there, but she, he always comes back. Actually, in Cuba, we have, we have Jazz Villa projects, he's living here in El Paso, but in Cuba, we have that company working with all our sponsors, they keep producing, and that's the idea, because Jazz Villa, he could come, go, I mean, he could fly, go out, go in, but that's the idea, to create something for El Paso, to the, to, um, to, uh, yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah, like, it, like it is happen right, happening right now in Cuba, we have the company there, and we are trying to do that, every city that he goes, he, he's trying, he tries to leave something there, so that's the idea, not only with Jazz Villa, but have a group of people, Okay, yeah. You're trying to raise the attention for the skyscraper? Right now, or yeah. Or for the business? See, mm -hmm. the business mm -hmm. would include skyscrapers and others. Right. The skyscrapers only include the skyscrapers. Yeah. The reason I'm asking mm -hmm. is because I also know some people from mm -hmm. LA and Hollywood that actually mm -hmm. here. Okay, great. Right. So yeah, the thing is, we have to start with something, because right now we don't have anything. So that's why we are starting with this place, Skyscrapers, that was very successful, and I think it's a very universal play. We have performed this in Cuba, Dominican Republic, in Panama, and it's been, I mean, it works, because it's very intimate, it's a contemporary play, and people love it. So that's why we want to bring it here to El Paso, so that way people could see, actually, because it's a live performance, people have to see it. And after we start with that, then create all that. It's a more ambitious project, but we have we want to start. And actually, let me tell you that we are having an event September 19th and 20th. We are having a work in progress of the play. We are going to present there these scenes of the play. They are coming, the actresses, for this work in progress. And that way we can also um, get some funds for the performance of the play in a plaza. Okay. So it's in the Epic Rayer Event Center. It's a... Uh, you know that play, like kind of a factory. It's gonna be there. Mm -hmm. um, what about the performing arts? Do you find musically? You mentioned a lot of the flavors. My skyscraper was that one. Oh, okay. Uh huh. What about the performing arts? Do you feel it lends itself to those? It gives some of the words that comes out in particular, and I kind of thought that kind of ties into your business model too. You need to kind of get the most people to appreciate. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's always different. That's why live performances happen. That's why I love theater. I mean, I like TV and I like cinema and everything. But I love theater because of that. And it's been, I tell you, every time uh, we make the presentation or a season the actors are different, so that's very rich to have. Actually, we are working right now with local actors, and that's pretty amazing. Also, we have the play that is bilingual, so we are going to perform it in Spanish one day, in English one day, because here in El Paso, people, most of them uh, speak in Spanish and English. So um, I, love, I love theater. I'm passionate about theater. I tell you, I just came here. It doesn't matter anything. And I think, well, we did Skyscraper. We also have Eclipse. That's our second play. And now we are working in Frontera that is from El Paso. And with this play, we are incorporating more dances as well. So it's a theatrical production, but we incorporate visual arts, dance, performances. And we want to create the company with all that. So that way we have a wide um, project. Yeah, he's the playwright. He's the playwright mm -hmm. and director. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So going back to okay. the separation Sorry. Yeah. of the uh -huh. two 
what do you need for skyscraper? Do you need us to buy tickets? Mm -hmm. Do you need us to yeah, be well. Okay, yeah, well, we, right now, we have this play that we are going to do the work in progress there, September 19th and 20th, but we need, for example, we are bringing these two actresses that they are not going to charge us what they usually do, because they are very uh, popular actresses, so they are doing, because they... Um, they valorate the work of jazz. So they are coming for free, but we still need to cover those costs. We need to uh, cover the production of the play. We need sponsorship. We are right now uh, distributing those tickets for the event. That way we could uh, re um, get some funds for the play. It's not going to be the whole production. But yeah, we're looking for people, sponsors, philanthropies, people who could help us support the play and then the, the project. That is the idea, that is the main objective to get there. That we have to start with a play so that way people could approach it and believe more because it's beautiful that I could speak here, but they have to see it because that's what theater has, that people need to see it. So yeah. Well, I think that everybody here that needs some, that know, like you have told me, that knows someone who can help us with the project, maybe one contact, or maybe if you want a sponsor, if you have some place where we can perform or rehearsal, or anything that could help us, that would be great. Because that's what we need. We need to, this project to be seen in the city. We need people to help us. And it's for a puzzle. I mean, it's for the city, and we are part of it. So I think that's the most important. Anything helps. Thank you very much. Thank you. Don't run off. Oh, we need, a, we need your picture. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> some um, announcements, but before I get into that, does anybody here have any community announcements they would like to mention? All right, great. <laughs> Excellent. Um, if you haven't, if you're not already aware of it, there is the Downtown El Paso Insider newsletter. Um, lets you know about the new downtown events, networking, uh, that type of thing you can sign up for at downtownelpaso.com. Um, starting tomorrow, there's the Juarez uh, Border Market Expo. Um, it's the 17th, 18th, and 19th. And where is it? It is, well, obviously it's in Juarez, but uh, <laughs> uh, it looks like it's on Abraham Lincoln Avenue. Anyway, it's from 9 to 5 for the next three days. If you want more information, come see one of us. Um, on the 18th at 7.30 a.m., Café y Pan Dulce at, uh, where is this one at? Uh, someone Airway. GECU. At the GECU. It's sponsored by GECU. Is it at GECU? Okay. Um, it's sponsored by the uh, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. Networking event uh, there. Another, uh, this is a Greater El Paso Chamber of Commerce Business After Hours event, Thursday night, 5.30 p.m. at Hotel Indigo. Um, also, you can, if you would like, you can sponsor a vendor table um, to uh, show off your business. Sunday on the 20th, Eastside Farmers and Artisan Market. This one goes a little bit later, so you can catch this one after the others. 3 to 7 p.m. 
Um, and this one is at Treywood and George Dieter. We have the Small Business Tax Series in El Paso on August 27th from 6 to 8.30 at the Small Business Development Center on Viscount. And looks like there's a small cost for that, but if you are interested, come see us. I need three hands. Um, the Rio Grande Council of Governments and the Hunt Institute cordially invite you to the Road to the 2020 Census, How Communities Can Prepare on Tuesday the 23rd from 10 to 12 at the El Paso Environmental Services Department. That's on San Paulo. Uh, and what else? This is a, on August 23rd at 10 a.m., we have, what is this? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I think we have a few too many events going on. It looks like we have a virtual event. Oh, Neil Patel is doing a virtual event. Oh, well, you know. Come see us if you're interested. <laughs> Score. Score in the Greater El Paso Chamber of Commerce will present the pre-business workshop on Thursday, the 24th from 7.30 to 4.30 at the Greater El Paso Chamber of Commerce. Um, and let's see what else we got here. Let's see if we can knock this out so we can get on to more presentations. There is a pre-business workshop on the 24th from 8 to 4 at the Greater El Paso Chamber of Commerce. And again, if you'd like any more information on any of these events, please come see us. What's that? Oh, you got two events? Please. On September 12th at the Veterans One Stop in the Northeast, Just email us. E email us the information and we'll, we'll disseminate it from there. Okay. I have a, the incoming director and I think that she would be willing to come out and speak on it. I, I, I looked into it because of some interest that I have um, with um, If anyone, if anyone parked in front, anybody? No. Okay. That's, you are. Right. It, yeah. Make sure you back in, and it's only for an hour. So. Yeah. Just to finish with what I was saying on that. Um, 
Um, part of the program is a uh, seven-week course in uh, grant writing, which might be something of some interest in the here. Excellent. Thank you. Um, all right. Got to give away a, a, a mug here. So who is who is? Um, Let's see. First, first timers. Who are my first timers? And all right. Who, who, now, who's a, who's applied for? Who's applied to present? Or who? All right. Who will apply to present? <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> Next we have Berea and Associates. Jorge, great, how are you doing? Thank you. Hand off the mic. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, friends, all. Uh, my, the name is Bond, James Bond. <laughs> As you may know, I work for MI6. But today I'm, I'm here to talk about sales management and coaching. That's what I do as, as a cover work, you know. Um, so I don't know what is the, okay, the paper. And today I'm going to work about sales. And everything starts with a cell, right? Um, so first I would like to know who is here for the last time. <laughs> okay, who, who, who has, who, has uh, 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 um, who is in business for uh, less than a year? Please. Okay, great. Um, more than a year and less than three years? Okay, less than three years, more than, okay, perfect. So if you're being in business and you're in business, you are selling your product, right? You are the initiator, so you need to, even if you, is, you don't like to sell, you are in sales. We are all here in sales, right? There is this guy, uh, Dr. Pink, he says that sell is human and that we are all in sales. If you're a doctor, if you're a teacher, you're selling, right? An idea. So we are only in sales if you are doing your own business. But if you're in, in, in business for a while, Right? You build your, your, your business for, from the gremlin up, and now you want to go to the next level. Let's say that you've been in business for three or four or five years, right? You are doing the sales. So typically, what, what will you do next? What do you think you're going to do next? You're doing the sales, and now you're going to, you want to go to the next level. What is the next step? Well, that's great. That's a great idea. Yes, yeah, so you, you've been doing that already, right? And, and that's referrals, and that's how the business owners do the sales. But if you want to go to the next level, usually what you do is you... Where, where, where should I put this? I said... No. The screen? Okay. <laughs> right. Gadgets. It's not working. Oh. Well. So, what I have found is that may, uh, many people, what they do is they they hire a sales professional, right? Battery. No. So well, let's forget about the thing. So you hire a sex professional, right? Like Tony right there, look. He's very elegant, very formal, right? Very sympathetic. 
And we are expensive. That's the truth, right? So you're in business and you want to sell services to another a company. You're in business to business type of environment. And you hire a sales professional that is expensive. That person is not going to produce results for you immediately, right? Because he needs to understand your product, understand your, your business, understand your culture. He needs to understand what is it that you want to accomplish, right? And that is time that is passing and that you're paying a, 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 probably a base salary plus a ramp up, right? And after six months without producing really the results, you're going to say, hey, uh, this is costing me a lot of money. I need to let her go, right? Or let him go. And that is very typical, especially if you are selling something that is not easy to understand, like services. If you're selling a product, well, it's easier, right? But if you're selling software or you're selling services, a monthly recurrent, right? And you want somebody else to do the sales for you, that is going to take him like a year. And, and that is a problem because then you're going to, after, after six months, you're going to let him go. Or, or the, other, the other case is that he, he's going to say, you know what, I'm not making money here. Right? If, not, if I'm not making money here, I'm, I'm going to get the best job that I can get in. I'm out of here, right? I, I was talking to this uh, guy yesterday. He, he does IT services. And that's what he did. I mean, the guy got a very nice job in, in uh, San Francisco, and he left for a good job, right? And he was like, well, he was here for a year. And yes, he did great things. It was expensive, but now we are, in the, but now we are back to zero. Right? It's working, yes. Okay. Sorry. Don't worry. This is your sales professional, right? <laughs> so what, what, can, what, what can you do? This is what I call the big conundrum. How would you put the pieces, the, the, the pieces together for this to work? So your options, I mean, that is your sales, well, the sales professional is going to be lots of fun. It's going to be demanding, right? Because a sales professional needs to understand your business, so you need to be there to teach him, right? You're delegating that important function, so he needs to be very well prepared, right? And it's going to be time consuming, and it's going to be, well, very expensive. Now, so we can Andrew, right? Six months later, you let him go. It's not because you are bad or, she, or because he's bad or it's because the model doesn't work, right? To hire, to hire a sales professional without having a sales engine will never work. And this is the message. Before you hire a sales professional, you need to have a sales process in place. Make sense? Before you hire any professional, you need to have a process in place. Because a professional usually is not going to build the process for you. If you want to delegate any function in your business, you need to first create a procedure, a process, have a binder, right? Have a culture with your values so the person knows exactly what to do and is going to be more effective producing results. Make sense? It's the same thing for sales. So that's, that's what you need to do. You need to create the process. Now, what are, what are your options? Well, you can hire a, a business development manager, right? And yes, a six-figure guy can figure that, that out for you. It's going to take, yeah, six months, and he's going to create the process, right? But after six months, you're going to be like, this, this guy is killing me, right? Because of the money that you need to spend. The other, the other option that you can, well, you can do it yourself. <laughs> Right? There is a lot of, you know, information books that you can read on sales. You can take courses, right, on how to create a process. You can, I mean, uh, there are um, people in, uh, over the Internet, which is the other one, uh, that you can do, right? You can also get an online program to help you. And probably one of two years after that, if you are consistent and you're disciplined, then you have your process, right? So our recommendations are very simple. 
suggestions. Don't try option two without higher, uh, having tried option three. <laughs> Go online, get information, and then you probably get some other books, and yeah, probably two years later you are there, right? Don't try option one, which is hiring a sales as, as development manager, without trying, trying it yourself. If you want to, to build a, a, a process, well, you try first to, try to build it. Probably you can do it fast enough, right? Or don't try to solve this big conundrum by yourself. That's what I recommend, right? That's what I do. I, I help you to create your sales engine. So you don't need to read all that material. You just go to the important um, pieces of it. And I tell you what piece goes first, what piece goes afterwards, and what piece goes afterwards. And then we divide the function. So the idea in, 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 in is that if you want to really go to the next level, you need to, to have sales down. And if you want to delegate that function or any function, you need to have a process and a culture. And I can help you as a sales consultant to do that. Okay? Thank you. Oh, well, apart from, for, uh, from having a uh, license to kill, um, well, I'm an engineer. I'm an uh, 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 electrical engineer. I started uh, working uh, for a software company doing programming. Then I worked for IBM. Then I worked for uh, 12 years for Telmex as a sales uh, representative. So I know sales. Then I worked for Time Warner Level 3 and also for uh, an MSP as a business development manager. So I know how to sell, and I, I have the process down. I've been studying this for 20 years. So I, I know exactly what to do, what are the pieces that you need to have, and what not to do, which is probably the most important things you, you can learn, what not to do, where, where uh, you don't need to invest time or money. Make sense? I also have a, two masters in philosophy and a PhD in psychotherapy. So, well... Uh, I believe that coaching uh, for the emerging needs is also very important. Sometimes as a business owner, you are very uh, lonely at the top, right? So when, uh, what I do in my sessions is that first I, I take care of the emerging need. You may have an emerging need in, in terms of existential need of some sort, right? And we can talk about it. As a psychotherapist, I can do that. So that's what I also do. Please. Which option are you? I'm not none of them. I'm, I'm, for, I'm, I'm option number four, right? I'm, I'm, I'm out of the box. But those are options. I mean, you have also those options, right? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm difficult to get these days. I'm, I don't have much time, to, to tell you the truth. I only have one more time slot. But um, if you know somebody that may need my, my, my help, I may consider to, to, to help him. Do you believe in uh, social media? Because I noticed that you don't have a Facebook page or Instagram for your sales. Well, I don't need to because I only have uh, seven customers. I'm looking for my seventh customer. Um, and I don't need more, really, to... to I, I don't want to, to work uh, the full week. So I don't want to get more... Co ah. Uh, yeah, well, depending on your business, right? And depending on, on your target. Because sometimes you're going to spend a lot of effort trying to, to go to the world when you're a local guy really selling to the local audience. Make sense? If you're looking for local companies, it doesn't make any sense for you to have a very nice... I mean, it's better to have LinkedIn probably and to, and to hunt exactly the companies that you want to have as customers, especially if you're local. If you, are, if you want to go national or, or uh, worldwide, then yes, right, by all means. But it's depending on your customer. That's why there is not a cookie cutter for your company. You need to think about it.
Make sense? So you, you, no, no, please. So you said, yeah, six customers would be for your seven. Um, when it comes to the, the breakdown and the volume of business you get from being one customer, are any of those customers kind of have a majority of work that would be losing one being more detrimental than trying to find new ones? Just, I mean, have you kind of keep those distributed when it comes to how much time or level of investment goes in either direction? So that, you know, how to sell strategy on the average eggs when basket, so. Exactly. So you only have six eggs, sure. 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 Well, I, 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 I'm selling really my time, right? So that's a problem that I have now. I want to go to the next level and probably go to uh, more of an online present, presence. That's my next step. I'm working towards that. But right now, I, I just spend two to three hours with, with each uh, customer on a weekly basis, and that's it. So. What do you think is your uh, like biggest brag on one of your customers? What do they get? Like what do they expect and what do they get? Good question, yes. yes. I have a presentation that I go over. Uh, what I do is I first evaluate your situation. So I have some questions that I do. And after that, uh, those questions, are, it's, it's going to take us like 30 minutes. We are going to know where you are as a company and really the potential that you have to grow. After that, we evaluate and we say, you know what, you are in the, in the 43% of your potential. Make sense? Exactly. So that, that's what I do. And uh, in every, every single uh, company has a different potential, right? If you are on the, on the 80% bracket, well, you are, you are there. You don't need my services. But you, if you are in the 40%, which is typical, then you have six kids. I mean, 40 more percent to gain. Make sense? Make sense? Or? So in other words, you're just evaluating the person in the company to say, in the marketplace, you could be doing 30 percent more in sales. And that's it? Well, we, walk away. We, we, we evaluate and we say, okay, do you have a, a package? For your, your, for your product. Do you have a target audience? Do you have a, a, a customer that you're well, very well defined? What is your type of customer? I, I do some questions, right? Those are the kinds of questions that I do. Do you have a culture? Do you have val uh, values already in reading? Everybody knows your values. Everybody knows your mission. Those things that you need to have in order to really to be successful in business. And sometimes, let me tell you, you are, growing, you are making your business uh, uh, grow by your effort and your intelligence, but without really uh, business uh, acumen, without really business um, strategy. So sometimes you have a business that is running like a tack on stand, and we need to check really the, the state of the, of the art in, in terms of, of what is it that is happening in your business. Sorry, let me go first. It's not my specialty, but all businesses have the same or almost the same structure, right? And there are certain principles that I know that work, especially in sales, that you need to have down in your company, right? Everybody knows you need to have a culture that, you, that is going to allow you to delegate and elevate people. If you don't have a culture very well established, right, you are not going to be able to delegate. You need to... Uh, empower people to make decisions for you, so you don't need to be in the mix. I was reading this book that I recommend to everybody that is the four-hour work week. Have you read it? Beautiful book, right? Four-hour, what a concept. And the idea is that the business owner is the bottleneck in every business. You need to be out of the picture and have processes in place for your business to run without you on automatic. Right? And that's what I do. I help be, uh, people to see what, what are those processes that are in place and what are those processes that are not in place that probably you're not even aware that, that there are some processes. Right? Yeah, if you're a small business, yeah, if you're a small business if, and, and you, you are still not reaching the ceiling, you probably don't need my services. But if you are starting your own business and you're, you don't know how to sell, it's going to take a lot of time for you to find, uh, figure that out. A lot of time and effort. <coughs> yes. Yeah, I'm going to kind of go off of her question. I, I just 
What makes you want to go to you instead of another coach, let's say like Kate Sanders? Sure. My sympathy, my sex appeal probably. Makes... No, really, 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 I'm, I'm going to, yes, I know. Uh, really, uh, what I have to offer than anybody else, really, is, is a, it's a matter of preference, if you want, because the, princi the principles are there, right? And sometimes the most valuable thing is not the coach, but the discipline that you get with the coach. Who has been here in a, in a gym making exercise? No? Okay. Who has the experience of having a coach? When you have a coach, do you tend to be more disciplined in going to the, to the gym? Yes. Right? Because you pay for it, right? So I, I don't want to go to the gym, but um, I mean, but I pay already for it, for the coach. So I go to the gym, right? It's the same concept. The important thing is to have somebody that is there every week to talk about your business, about your culture, about what is going on in your business, what is the sales process. And that, that is really what, where the value comes into place. I mean, you can, I mean it's, it's, it's a matter of preference, really. I mean, if you don't like my personality, probably, I mean, if, if, if you prefer my, uh, uh, somebody with, you, you know, less experience, a millennial, well, you can get one, right? If you want somebody with more experience, you can get one. But the important thing in the message is get one. You're going to need it, yes. Are there particular industries you feel the most useful for you mentioned your experience in sales to sales at different industries? Yes, it's services. Service oriented. Every, anybody that is, Charging monthly, right, is going to benefit greatly from my services. But I have people that they are doing products, and, and they are benefit, benefiting also from, from my... Yeah, that's the next step. That is going to be the next step. So I, now there is a lot of content there, right? And and I'm going to do my own content. Well, to put it in the pile, but yeah, there is there is nothing really in terms of innovation that I can bring to you, really. I mean, there is a lot of things already there, a bunch of good practices. The only thing, the wisdom comes really to filter all that thing because there are many things. You read a book and probably one or two concepts are, are useful, and that's it. But you spend a lot of time and money with wasting in a book. Said, like, for me, the most important thing you said is to be there for your client on a regular basis to filter. And the noise, and if there's something that you need to be aware of, you can go Exactly. That's the thing. Yes. Good question. Good question. Or, originally, it was for nine months. Now they are considering, like, an ongoing basis. Yeah, they are considering this because it's the discipline. The value comes in the discipline that they get. Um, and again. Up, up there is, is very, it's a very lonely place to be. I mean, sometimes you cannot, if you don't have a partners, right? I mean, you can talk, yes, with your accountant, probably with your, uh, with your lawyer. But it's difficult to talk to somebody that is, you know, in, in the same boat with you. So that's, that's also the value of it. Make sense? And you said that that's one of the ones that we work with a Exactly. Exactly. Typically it's two hours, two hours and a half. Okay, guys, thank you so much. Where is my cup? <laughs> I just came for the cup. <laughs> what as a community can we do for you? Well, you can do for, for a company that may need my services. You can do a lot, right, for that company. You may have a friend of a friend, right, that has a company that needs help. Well, I still have one, one time slot, so you can come with me and, and we can see if, if it's a good fit for me or not.
Okay. Thank you so much for it. haven't done it already or didn't do it, maybe you got here late, um, please make sure you sign in. It's very important. We have to report the, you know, how many people are here for the Kaufman Foundation, so that's really important on how we, um, the numbers are important. Um, and um, all you first timers, tell your friends, bring a friend, apply to present. We need people to present, Pete. So come on. Um, it just go to one million cups slash El Paso. Hit apply. We'd love to see you up here. <laughs> and that's all I got. Uh, mill around, introduce yourselves, network, meet some friends. And uh, that's it. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you for coming. One Million Cups is a weekly educational program developed by the Kauffman Foundation. Over the years, we've added more cities. It creates a great energy here to see what's happening across the country. What I've learned from other entrepreneurs is very, very valuable. Sitting in a room with other people that have ideas too, it helps people to leave thinking, you know what? My idea is worth something. It's worth pursuing. It's worth going after it. Even if it looks like a challenge, I should still go out and try to do it.